All right, I don't claim to be an expert in terms of strategy of the of the game of basketball. I was good as a kid when it was all based around shooting, and I was always a good three point shooter. Um, and still am, and especially if I practiced regularly, I've, I'd be, and, and I am just naturally a good three-point shooter. If there were three-point leagues recreationally you could join, I'd be good. I have memories of my teen years of stealing the ball at a friend's church basketball court, which was a really nice facility, hitting a half-court shot in this guy's eye. Um, that, that was when I was about 15. When I was 10, I was in a league, uh, I was in different basketball camps and won free throw contests and hit about three or four threes on the last day of the camp in a recreational game we had. Had other negative experiences. When I was 20, I went to play at the same court where I hit all those threes and um, was hated because once strategy comes into play, once you hit, say, teen years and triangle offense and certain plays or any, just the idea of plays, whether it be a few or many, and then combating other people's plays, and that's not so much my thing. I, um, and, and I was criticized for falling short in a game where strategy was was a big part, um, and the same happened when I joined the league in middle school. However, in middle school, uh, a local recreational league, the same people criticizing me for falling short on gameplay would still play recreational games and and note how good I was as a three point shooter. I hit one from damn near half court as well, and the kid next to me was like, "Well, how would you do with hard defense playing on you?" And so it's like he was admitting I was a good natural shooter, but just that I wasn't so hadn't put together any sort of skills or practiced at all or done anything in terms of learning strategy or combating strategy. So that's my thing there. As far as watching the game, I have incredible knowledge and have since I was a young kid, five, six years old, uh, as it pertains to uh, many, many players uh, on the roster. Now, on the modern-day roster, there are many players I don't know, but when I was a main, the prime of my fandom, which was 96 to 98, uh, I had thousands of cards. I knew all about the old players of the 60s, 70s, 80s from learning about my dad. Watched as much footage as you could get in that time. This is pre-YouTube. Um, knew where all the great players went to college. Watched as much as I could. And, and obviously, some comes through video, some comes through image. With the modern league, um, obviously, I... Um, there are a lot of players I don't know, and some I do. But I know a lot about, you know, I'm in a lot of old school basketball groups on social media and I talk a lot about uh, all the players I know. Now again, with strategy and gameplay, I'm going to fall short, but when it comes to just knowledge of a player, what he looks like, the teams he played for, the great feuds he had, where he went to college and all that, I'm pretty knowledgeable on old school basketball and as many eras of basketball as possible. So this is just to give a background um, on, on my knowledge and all of that. Uh, but, you know... I could do lots and lots of trivia on old school players when, to, when they went to college, their main feuds, their main championships. I can name all the NBA champs probably forever, at least back to 57. You know, when the, the Celtics, 59 through 66, and then the St. Louis Hawks in 58. I don't know if I know 50 through 57 quite yet. Um, so that's to give you some background. Grew up watching Jordan during that second 3 Pete era. And, and again, and, and even how young I was, I was born in 1990, I was young watching the league and learning about all this old stuff and memorizing it at a young age. That was just my personality and my dad's personality. And We came from an ABA town, didn't have an NBA team, so I knew a lot about college and the ABA as far as stuff my dad watched in person and handed down to me. And then with all the many players who never came to my town, whether it be uh as I was a fan or throughout the old school era, all of that came through reading and watching and so on. I met Dr. Jane Person in 97. I went to see Jordan play an exhibition game in my town in 96, as far as things in person. And then my town, Louisville, is, is a huge college town, so I was also very knowledgeable specifically on UofL history and, and, uh, and trying to keep up with them year by year. By the time 99 hit, Jordan retired, and I moved away and spent some time as a big-time baseball and football fan and still am. And things any kid in 99 liked, like Pokemon. And then I got into pro wrestling in 99, and that became my main love. And then it became obsessing over encyclopedic knowledge of pro wrestling, past and present. So that's to give you some background. When Jordan would play, my dad and I would always root against him because he was the best player. And we wanted somebody else to win, whether it be Reggie and the Pacers, who were the closest team to us, uh, or the Jazz, or the Sonics, or any of the teams that would play him. Uh, but, you know big into cards, big into doing anything I could, and then it all kind of changed when he retired. 
98-99, um, because he officially announced his retirement in early 99. That was the year of the lockout. So that's to give you some background. Now, LeBron, of course, I've been able to follow his career, but I haven't been a hardcore fan. And, and when I watch a game, I mentioned I don't watch strategy. Obviously, when I'm watching a game, I'm watching strategy, but I'm probably more paying attention to just the basics. Who's got the ball? Who shot and missed or scored? Where'd they shoot from? And the basics, I, I don't really know what play they're doing or, or how they're countering, how the other team's countering it or how they're reversing that play or how they're combating that play or the defensive play they're doing. I'm just more or less a casual fan. And, and a lot of people in America and the world watch it casually. Who's got the ball? Who's shooting? Who's missing or scoring? Who passed it to them? Who are they passing it to? The basics that the minds I can watch, kind of like if you were to watch a chess game and watch each move in real time but not think as much about strategy. So I watch it without strategy. So LeBron I followed as not a hardcore fan because he came in in 03 after I was kind of done being a hardcore fan. But of course I followed his career. I watched the finals he participates in. I pay attention to when he was won the title or not and the teams he's been on, Cleveland, Miami, Cleveland, L.A., and of course three titles, 12, 13 in Miami, 16 in Cleveland, and 20 in L.A., I am prepared to say, and again, I'm no expert, that LeBron is better. I think he's better fundamentally because while he may trail him by two titles, Michael, as far as world titles, he has 10 conference titles. Jordan had six. Jordan never made the finals and lost, which means he never lost, but it also means that he he only had six conference titles because he only had six world titles. So LeBron has four more conference titles. He may tie him for world titles, and I think he's fundamentally better. I think Jordan did more for the game. You know, you go back to the 60s and 70s and even 50s, and you can name your Koozies, your Mikans, your Russells, your Chamberlains, um, your Irvings, and, of course, Magic and Bird in the 80s. But Jordan made the NBA really, really, really big. That was the attitude era as a wrestling fan of the NBA was the entire 90s, in my opinion, 90 through 99. The WWF, it was 96 through 02. I think the hottest was 90 through 99 for the NBA. And I don't think James was able to take it any higher. Jordan made the game what it was, and I don't know if, if James had been around in Jordan's era, if his playing, if just his overall, a lot of it has to do with image and look and the, the branding and everything else. If James had played in Jordan's era, I think he would have been, obviously your genetics don't change, so he would have been fundamentally a better player. Let's say Jordan was never born and you put James in Jordan's era. Fundamentally a better player. I don't know if he could have took the league that high because a lot of it has to do with look and image and the media you're doing and everything else. So I think Jordan was better for the league, took it to a higher level, a bigger icon. And I don't think the sport, maybe in other countries it's bigger than it was under Jordan's era, which is kind of how I feel the WWE is now. But at least in America, I don't think it's bigger than it was in Jordan's era. I think it's probably smaller, though still huge. But I feel like in Jordan's era, everybody was watching, you know. And, and even the non-finals games were in James's era. It might be just the finals. Obviously, with things being more political now, uh, people aren't even watching the finals. Uh, many people. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm far left, so I'm still watching. But I think – and some people would have never been watching in the first place, even before it got political. And so they weren't able to leave and stop watching when it got political because they didn't watch it in the first place. But the main thing is, overall, I think – a lot of people are watching, but it's less. And so I think Jordan did more for the game, brought it to a higher level from where it is, increased it at a much... Like, let's just throw numbers out there, random numbers. If the NBA was at a 6 on a 1 through 10, Jordan took it to a 10. Okay. James, it may have dropped to a 9. Okay. So not only did he not take it higher, he there was it would be hard to take it higher but it probably decreased a little bit. But I feel like fundamentally, though, a better player. And that's the main point of this night. It took me nine minutes to get there. Fundamentally, though, I think he's a better player. So Jordan means for the sport, means more for the sport and is a bigger icon, but I think James is fundamentally better. And I, I could see him, he's 35 now, I could see him surpassing Jordan in a num in number of titles. Uh, and, and if not that, at least tie him. So that's my main message. I don't know if I would have been prepared to say this before James won this fourth title. Um, but now that we've gotten there, 10 conference titles. I mean, that is amazing. Every season between 11 and 19, or 11 and 18, he led his team to the final. So that's eight times. He also led them in 07, so that's nine conference titles. And then 10, 
conference titles 2020, and in 2020 he won it for the fourth time. So he's four and six, but nevertheless, that is incredible. That is incredible. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, and 07. That's 10 conference championships and four world championships. But I just think a fundamentally better player. You watch him, and he's built more like a tank. He's a lot thicker than Jordan. I'm guessing he's, I don't know about height, but he's like a tank but incredible athleticism. And people say Jordan made the game look easy, but I think James makes it look easier. It's like he's just going out to take the trash out, you know, or, or walking down the street or walking down the hallway. I mean, it's just whatever easy things we do in our life, he does the game that easily at 35. At 35, he's not just still around, he's dominating. 